So a little while back, I released my most recent Helix preset pack, and I called it the Simply Heavy preset pack. And there was a reason. After having used any number of hundreds of IRs or dual cabs inside of Helix, you know, two single cabs, dual cab blocks, multiple EQ blocks, I ended up making a preset pack with the most minimal amount of blocks per preset that I have. And the reason was because I discovered after many hours of experimenting and stepping outside of what I thought I knew, I used single cab blocks and I used two of the most important settings inside a Helix that helps sculpt and shape EQ. And that is mic selection inside the cab block and the distance selector. That's what we're going to go over today. With those two settings, the amount of flexibility and EQ we have right within the, the, the cab block itself before we even add any sort of external or post EQ within our presets. And maybe we can get as mix ready of a Helix patch as we can without any EQ blocks at all. So that's what we're gonna go over. Let's get to the computer. All right, so like I was blathering over there, I'm gonna try and demonstrate how simple it can be, or a better, I guess a better way of saying it is, how much flexibility we have using two sliders inside a Helix. The microphone selection, the different microphones we have allotted to us inside of a cab block, and also the distance slider. It goes from one inch to 12 inch inside, again, of that cab block. It has it in both dual cab blocks, but as the case with my last preset pack, the Simply Heavy pack, and in this demonstration, I'm using single cab blocks now. And it's because I was using two cab blocks to basically kind of shape and EQ the sound, where once I settled on using one single cab block and then playing with these two sliders, it kind of opened the door to the possibilities. So let's go. What I have here on screen is I have one track with a DI signal, and it's just a riff that I have, and I'll show you what it sounds like. One single guitar, and I'll move the sliders so you can kind of get an idea right off the bat what I'm talking about. And then I have, with this particular preset pack, or preset patch, I have the cab selection, and the default of four inches is kind of where I settled for this particular preset originally when I came up with the preset. So that's gonna be the first solo isolated guitar, right? The next set is the same microphone, the same distance in a mix. The next set after that is the same microphone, but at one inch as opposed to four inches in a mix. And then this final set is basically a sweep. I set up some automation. So it goes from one inch for that microphone, one inch away from the cone, all the way up to 12 inches away from the cone. And we can hear essentially what kind of EQ shaping is happening just by doing that. That's a little long-winded, but let me show you what we got going on. So here is this particular thing. Let me put on the headphones. So here is the riffs. This is just a DI again. Um, you can bypass it. <laughs> Super cool, super inspiring stuff, I know. Uh, eat your heart out. So so this is, again, just one single guitar down the center, and I'm going to move. We're, we're, we're on the, the 84 condenser mic inside of Helix, inside of this uh, cabinet block. It's a 4x12 Uber T75. And I'm just going to move the distance, and you can hear what's happening, okay? And I'll also put up uh, Pro-Q to give you a visual representation as well. Okay. All right. So let's do this.
Now, pretty dramatic, right? And I, I, I find that obviously when you're up against, now uh, this is all obviously theoretically inside the box of the Helix. We're not actually holding a mic one inch away from a, I hope that's evident and obvious, you know, but we're using estimations based on what it says inside a Helix. Now we're one inch with the 84 condenser mic up against what would be the cab, right? You get a lot of that proximity. Now, it's interesting because you're not really, ca you're not getting the room. Usually if you're micing a cab in a real space, you're gonna also get the room, but we're just getting real like dry changes in EQ based on the, the relative distance. And you can hear as we're, we're right up on it, we're getting up an approximated um, proximity effect. We're getting a lot of low end bump with this particular mic when we're right up against it. And when I pull the distance further away, when we go from one inch closer to 12 inches, you can hear it starts to kind of roll off that low end and bring, also bring down some of the mids almost, and the highs tend to come up. And then when you get about the middle, it does something weird too, where it kind of like a little bit more of the lows come back in. So you can just move this slider. If you do something like this and loop a riff or a DI track, you move this slider and kind of find the sweet spot depending on the mic you decide you want to use. So I'm going to kind of move it to the center. I ended up landing on four inches when I created this patch and I'm going to move it and kind of, you'll hear why I kind of settled on it. <laughs> Now, obviously, there's a lot of variables. You can go in and adjust the amp settings. But what I did is I kind of got the amp sounding the way I wanted it and then started messing with this. So there's just an endless array and uh, uh, um, a massive amount of combinations that you can tweak to get the sound. But these two sliders make a huge difference, too, and I think they just get overlooked. <laughs> So I landed on four inches when I created it. It still sounds pretty good. I would probably still settle on that. It's a good combination of low end and kind of high end sizzle, and it's not harsh. I, I do have the low cut down to 7.9K. And I think, again, as I've discussed in some of my videos, playing with the low cut and the high cut makes, a, makes these emulated cabs sound a little bit more real. You know, if you take out the high, I'll take out the high cut and you can hear there's a lot of high end information that doesn't seem usable to the guitar tone. So like the body of the tone is still there, but you know, you're losing a lot of that high end crazy and weird information, right? But I don't want to get lost in the weeds. Let's, this is what we're here for is to look at these, these two sliders. And if I switch the mic, obviously that's going to make a dramatic difference as well. So let's go to the classic 57 and you might be able to hear a, a more uh, definitive example of what I'm talking about. Same tone, same cab, 57 dynamic. We are one inch away and I'll move it around. And you can see like there's certain, depending on the distance, you get certain cuts. You get a pretty upper mid cut right there like around one to two K. Interesting stuff, you know? See, this sounds pretty cool. One inch away sounds a little bit too, I don't know, a little bit too much. As I pull away, um, the high end sounds a little bit 
more acceptable to me, but I noticed that I was losing a little bit of that low end, so I brought that low cut down. I don't know if that was evident, but that's what I did. And again, this is just a, in another example of like switching the microphone and moving the distance. That's all we've done to EQ this guitar tone. So before I go over every single microphone and every possible distance, l l let me show you exactly what the hell I'm talking about in the point of this video, right? So again, I have these, this uh, pair of stereo guitars, right? And that was just the, this is, they're both using the same Helix patch. The, it's from my Simply Heavy pack. It's the purple, using the RevGen purple. They're both using the 4x12 Uber, T, Uber T75 speaker. And this is four inches. This is where I settled. This is where the, the preset pretty much is. What, if, you, if you were to pick it up, this is where the settings would be. And this is in the context of a mix. All right? Four inches away from the cap using the 67 condenser mic on both of these guitars. Yes. All right? So what I'm going to do is same thing. I'll just pin this here, and for visual sake, I'll also throw up Pro Q3. All right. Now let's listen to it in a mix. I lied. It's not in the mix yet. Ha! <laughs> This is a stereo pair, so you can hear not just one down the middle, stereo pair, and then we'll go into the mix, all right? I'll just let it roll right into it. Same in the mix. Now we're going to hear it same uh, preset, but I moved the microphones from four inches to one inch, and I just did that with automation. I'm not going to go through and do it. So I'll play the last part of the four inches away from this of the the cab, and let it go into one inch away, and you can hear a difference. You'll hear how it's kind of either settling into the mix a little bit, or kind of falling out of the mix. <laughs> So you can hear that moving those microphones closer in this situation with this particular preset pack or this particular preset, moving it closer didn't do it any, any favors. Like to me, the guitars in the mix where the, the, the microphone was set to four inches away sounds better than one inch away, right? So again, I'm going to play the, the end of the four inch mix and let it start into the beginning of the one inch mix. It's pretty dramatic, right? And again, this is just a demonstration of just going from one inch to four inch and the difference it makes. And trying to drive my point across, trying to, to, to get you guys thinking like, 
we move that slider from one inch to four inch, you can go to 12 inches. So this next group of this next s- segment is the, sli- the, the, the distance slider is going to be moving from one inch right up against the grill or whatever from t- to 12 inches away. And I automated that, I can show you. It's just an automation setup. So this is controlling Helix native and it's controlling this parameter. And you'll see it, if you watch it, you'll see it go from one inch, move to 12 inches, and you can hear how the change affects how the guitars sit in the mix. So I'll shut up and we'll listen. So you can hear across that spectrum, there are a few spots where it really kind of brought the guitars up uh, and it made it a little more predominant in the mix. Now, I'll solo the guitars so you can hear it a little more clearly, but I just, I did want to give, there's far more context, as my buddy Steven always says, like there's more context of stuff when it's actually in a mix. So uh, I'll solo the guitars and you can hear again, go from one inch to 12 inch and what it's doing. So you could hear like when it got to a, even about like six or seven inches away, it really did shoot up. It really kind of like, whoa, it's like you're getting a, a, a volume swell almost. It's very interesting. So why don't we switch the microphones and we can, you know, have another example. Uh, let, let's go to the 414, which is like the AKG microphone. Um, pretty popular on guitar. So I'll switch these. So what's going to happen is it will do the same distance sweep, but the microphones are now the 414, all right? You want to listen to those in context of the mix, we can do that too with the 414. Let's do one more example with a, one more microphone. Uh, I'll solo it again and I'll switch it to, let's switch it to the 57. A very obviously uh, the, the king of guitar microphones. And uh, I'll play it soloed and then in the mix. So there's this high end spike right here, like about 5K, 4.5K. You can even visually see it happening on the EQ. I'll show you. You see that? It's very, very interesting. So, and let's just hear that in the mix and see how these sound with the bass and the drums.
I know that was a lot. It, it may be a little complicated. Some, setting something like this up is a little convoluted. I understand. But the point is, when you're create, you can apply this principle to like a plugin if you're using different plugins because you have the ability to move the microphone right um, in in across the, the the speaker and in proximity to the cone, distance away, and I I think a lot of people maybe sleep on this, especially inside of Helix. I could be wrong. I certainly did. What I'm getting is don't make the mistake I did where it's like you pick. Yeah, I want this cab, and I know I'm gonna pick this mic because I know it. It's used a lot on guitar and boom, I'm going to slam it one inch away. And I didn't really even mess with these settings where, again, the last preset pack, you know, I exclusively EQ'd using microphones and the distance slider. So don't make the mistake I did. Take a look at these settings and see how powerful they really are. And maybe it can help you kind of settle on a tone that you really like without, and also it's free, it frees up blocks. You know, you're freeing up, we're, we have four blocks here. Distortion, an amp block, a cab block, and a verb block. If you don't want reverb for the room, I usually add some room reverb, then boom, you're down to three blocks. And if you're in HX Stomp, that's fantastic. If you're using a Pod Go, you can replicate this preset in the Pod Go. It's, ama it's amazing. I'm annoyed <laughs> that I slept on these particular settings for so long, but I really think if you take a look at them, uh, they could be beneficial to you. So I hope you guys find this video helpful. I know I rattled off a lot of BS, kind of tied myself up talking about these concepts, but I, I was pretty excited about like the realization of what you could really do. So I hope you dig it. I hope, it's, I hope you find it useful. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all your support. Special shout out to those of you supporting me over on Patreon and of course here as members on YouTube and you know how it is. If you're looking for other ways to support me, the channel, what I'm doing, I have music for sale on Bandcamp and of course streaming everywhere music is streamed. I have this preset pack containing this preset as well as many other preset packs for Line 6 Helix family of products, the Podgo and the Fractal FM, right? On my webpage, nickhillmixmusic.com, check it out. You can also buy and listen to my music there as well. There is merch available. Links are down in the description below. And I really appreciate it. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe. Take care of yourself. Be kind to one another. And I'll see you in the next one.